Problems, problems, RVs and problems. They seem to go hand in hand. So I've had a problem with this RV for the last 10 years since you've had it. Kind of a minor issue, just but it's been irritating. And I've come up with a solution and I want to share with you what I've done and how I went about doing it. So here's my little situation. It's been going on for years. And, and I don't know how common this is on how many Winnebago's, what year models. But here's the problem. When you open up your storage door, you can see it. Well, maybe it'll stay up, maybe it won't. If you get it up here, see it, it won't stay. No, it don't want to stay. Come on. Stay. Stay. Okay, it's staying. Barely. But, because how it goes, you get under here, you're getting some pop or something out of there, and a little puff of wind comes along and it slams down, hits you in the head, messes up your hair. And at my age, I can't, I can't spare any, any more hair loss. So, I thought I'd come up with a solution for this. So... As you can see from the factory, we only have one gas shock on the left-hand side. And there's no gas shock on the right-hand side. And I was talking to another fellow who owns a Winnebago 38J, maybe a 2007 or 8 model. I think he said he had dual shocks on his. So maybe at some point in time, Winnebago wised up and started putting two shocks on each door. But on this model, they did not. So it's up to me to come up with a solution. So, let me show you my solution. Let's back up here. Alright. Now, here's the solution. Just open it up a little bit. Now, that's much better, isn't it? So, and you can see here what I've done. I've come up with my own little bracket here. It took a little thinking and creativity to come up with something that would hold up, I believe. Because uh, you can see uh, the original design... You got this metal plate here, and there's nothing to fasten to. This is really thin. I mean, it's maybe a 1 seconds of an inch. This little aluminum piece is super thin aluminum. You see how this is made. This metal is riveted to it, comes all the way around, rivets to the thin aluminum, and then you got something beefy to bolt to. That, that works. So I have to try to duplicate the same thing on the other side. So that's where I came up with this little bracket idea. So I'm going to show you how I made this bracket. So if you want, you can do the same thing for yours. Well, I have to show this some more because this is just too cool. Because you can see how how well it's staying up. Now you can take it all the way down even to... How far can I go with it? Right, right about there. Let go. And there she goes. Now look, look at the original door. I mean, you just barely touch it and it closes. So, especially on the colder the weather is, the worse they, they act, those gas shocks. And um, so, all right, so let's head to the garage, and I'll show you some pieces, parts they've come up with, and how I've got all this done. Okay, well, I've got laid out here some of the components that you're going to need. Of course, first of all, you're going to need a gas shock, or a couple. Now, I already had these on hand for spares. These are, you can look here closely, these are a 60-pound. That's what I've already installed on the door that's finished. And you can see how quick they come up. There's a 60, 60 pound shock on each side, each hinge. And there is the part number, and you can um, you can just Google this number on Amazon. They, they pull right up, and you can get them a different poundage. In fact, I've ordered two more. They're on the way. They should be here any day. I ordered two more. Instead of being 60 pounds, they're going to come in at 55 pounds. Because uh, you do have to, uh, with me, I have to compress these by hand slightly, and I'll show the show you the trick on how to compress these gas shocks by hand. Because uh, that, that took a little trial and error to figure that out. So you'll need that. You go to Lowe's, get you this here item number one one two nine two. It's a one eighth by one inch flat aluminum. It's great, great stuff to make that little bracket with. Gonna need you some some arrow rivets. These are three sixteenths by with a one eighth grip. Uh, and, and that makes just the right distance the time we get through this bracket and get through that thin metal inside that door and get a good, good, good grip so it don't pull out. We need that. We need here some 8mm uh, ball studs by 5 sixteenths, half inch long thread right there. So, so your, your shot can snap on that. We're going to fasten that to this here in a few minutes and you'll need your mount. And uh, this is item number JT009. I'll put all that stuff in the notes down below if you have links to it all. So it's kind of all you need, not much, in just a little bit of time. Some basic hand tools, some drills. 
Um, I've done this for you too, so you can kind of do a screenshot, get the light on here better. Okay, see if that's a little bit better for you. But I put this on graph paper or grid paper, when you want to call it. You know, each little square is one quarter inch. So you can just take a picture of this, print it out, and you can make your own identical little bracket. So you can see here, all the, all the small, small holes are 3 sixteenths. The one large hole is 5 sixteenths. So you just lay it right on top of there, and that's what you're going to have when, when you're done. So I've got this one made, so now I've just got to duplicate this. Uh, two or three more, because I'm going to do it on a couple of the other doors, or the larger ones anyway, those are the ones that give me trouble. So uh, I'm going to get my drill out and uh, do some drilling from, uh, from this more, more here, more aluminum stock. Make me some more pieces, and we'll start assembling this other door. Well, it ain't pretty, and you can see I made a mess, but I got my first hole drill, 5 sixteenths. And you see I kind of clamped it up and we'll make sure nothing shifted. So first I clamped that piece down real tight here. Then I put it in the clamp so it wouldn't shift in the rear. Then I clamped right here so there wouldn't be no shifting going on as I was drilling. So everything stayed straight. So that turned out pretty good in my weird way of doing it. Because I really don't have a lot of fancy tools here in my, my little garage. So I'm just making with, making do with what I got. Alright, so here's my strategy. See, I've got me what, six plates, I think, there. Got it bolted together so I can't shift, can't move. And got it nice and flat. Got me some leftover pieces I've clamped on both sides. So I want to make sure they're all the same. And I just put my drill bit my, in my little drill doctor. Got a nice sharp edge on it. I'm going to get me a little oil and start and lube this up and drill some holes. All right, here we go. I just love my drill doctor. Boy, well, that's, that's a great, great tool to have to keep those drill bits sharp. See how it does. It is a little bit, so it does stay soft. But you have a good sharp bit with those constant cutting. Steady pressure, almost through, I feel. A helicopter! Woo, there she goes! Number one is drilled. I'll just go do that a few more times and I'll have me a bunch of plates ready to roll. All right, you see, I got me a pile of brackets and all drilled, ready to go. But on the bottom one where the drill bit pushes out, you can see I got some burrs. I want to clean those up. That's a great little tool there. And put that on my drill bit and spin out a few, few seconds and get all that cleaned up. Oh, I mentioned my drill doctor earlier, and that thing is great. I use that all the time. Nothing worse than a doll drill bit. So let me clean this up and we'll continue on this journey. Okay, now here's where I had to start doing some thinking because you know my first thought, okay, if I could just get you know one of this one of these sockets, this, this ball mounted on, on here, that was my goal. But I'm, I first thought, well, if I came in here and cut a hole and put a nut, but but it wouldn't work because there's gonna be so much pressure on that, it would quickly fatigue this thin aluminum, and you can see how thin it is right there. Because the factory already knew this would be a problem because that's why they created all this metal piece here to retain that strength because there's going to be so much pressure on it. So that's why I made my little aluminum plate, but I had to do some very careful measurements. So I made sure that this hole here that I drilled, the hole I drilled here lines up with this pin here, the same distance from this bottom edge. So, so now, and I drilled me a 5 sixteenths hole 
Maybe yeah, maybe it's five sixteenths, wasn't it? Okay, I had to stop and look. I am right, that's five sixteenths. So my next problem is I need to bore that hole out in order where'd my plate go? Come here, here we go. In order to get this nut on the back side to fit in there. And when I did my measurements, it turned out the drill bit I needed was going to be a 1730 seconds, a drill bit I do not own. So I got to looking around, and I remembered I had one of these stepping drill bit things, which was really handy. So, and I measured it, it's on the, on the third step here. It comes in about uh, 340 thousandths, which is just a little over 1730 seconds. So that works out just right. So my next step is I'm going to carefully take this drill I got to and, and bore this out just enough so this nut will fit in that hole. So let's do that next. All right, let's try this one hand, see how we go. Because I think it's the, not the first, it's the second, third, the third notch there. All right, there's one. Just check this, because it is, can you see that? It's not going to be big enough, all right. Got to go one more step. Stand up here a little bit better. like drilling holes in your RV. Alright, now let's see here. Where'd my plate go to? Oops, see what I mean? Crazy thing won't stay up. That's why we're putting this in here. Alright, and you can see it, it's, it's a little snug fit. They don't quite fit. All I gotta do is tap it with a hammer and it should go in there. So let me get the camera in the right spot. Let me tap it with a hammer and it should seat in. Okay, I'll show you what I did. I just had it up in there, took, a, took this hammer, just give it a few little love taps and it pressed right on in. And you can see how it's going to look. Now all I got to do is drill those, uh, well, I think are 3 sixteenths. So I got to drill those holes out, put in my pop rivets, then mount my shock, and then this door will be finished. And I just got uh, about three or four more to do the same thing to. And we'll have this thing upgraded to some super duty gas shocks upgrade from single to dual shocks okay so I don't figure there's no no need of me filming me drilling holes but I'm just going to show you so I drilled the lower hole and the upper hole as soon as I did I, I put in a rivet on the first hole then I held it in place drilled the second hole put in a rivet so that way I know it's going to stay put and then I'll come in here drill me another one Just trying to fall again. Alright. I'll grab me another grab me another rivet. Rivet. Did I say rivet like a frog? I think I did. It's because it's five o'clock in the morning, by the way. I'm working late tonight. Alright, so I'll finish drilling these other holes out and get everything lined up and we'll be really getting close. Alright, see I've done a dry run. I got all the rivets in place. Now I just gotta start popping them. Gets a little tight back here on the back side. So I'll show y'all just do one here real quick. We'll see how it works out with one hand. Maybe that works so good, I don't know. Try another bite. Oh, I didn't work into a good crazy door. Stay up there. Okay. A good squeeze. Nope, it ain't gonna work. Gotta take two hands. I ain't got enough. Just don't have enough oomph this morning, so it's gonna take two hands. Alright, I've got two. Let me try to try to get this third one here possibly. There she went. I like it. Looks good, looks good. Alright, 
Just got four more to go. How's that look? All the rivets installed. Now it's time to mount the shock and mount another piece like this that I got where to go. Yeah, just this little dude here. So we got to do some careful measuring when we do this because I don't want to be drilling 20 different holes and mess, messing things up and getting things out of alignment. And I'm going to show you why it's important as far as getting these in, in the correct position. You can see I've already got this one mounted. What you got to watch out for is that you don't run out of stroke. You want to, because if you, if you accidentally mount this too high, when you try to close the door, as this compresses, it'll bottom out. So I'll show you how this one works. It comes in, let's see, right about, what we got, what we got, get my fingers out of the way. We got about a half inch left. So it's cutting it pretty close. But it works. Okay, so I need to try to get about the same thing on this one here. So I've already done some measuring about where I want to put it. But we need to, where's my shock? It's laying here somewhere. Hang on, i got to find it. Alright, I found it. So, put the shock in up here. We gotta do some careful measuring because you know we don't want it too far to too far to the right and be hitting the paint. Don't want to be too far to the left binding up in the door. So I'll probably try to clear about an eighth of an inch or so from the from the paint, and uh, I'll mount my bracket. I made me a little mark right there about where I want the I think the screw hole should be. And so and remember we want to be a little above. Because we still need to, need to maintain compression, so uh, even though that's the center point of the ball, we need to be higher. Giving okay, let me go over to this side where it's already finished. So much further it goes below, something like that's what we need over here. And then we have the problem of compressing the shock, getting it installed. But I got a trick for that. Whoops! Right. See what I mean? How one shock is about useless. All right, and that's one 60-pound shock, and the least little bit of thing that falls down on you. But we're about to eliminate that problem. So let me get, uh, let me do a little measuring. Let me get this mounted, and uh, we'll be able to ready to install that shock. All right, hope I got this right the first time. I love using these self-tapping screws; they're very handy. Get you a magnetic magnetic tip bit on your impact. We're going to come up here and shoot a screw in it. All right. Now let's uh, hook up a shock. All right. You see it's fully mounted. All three screws. Got me a little dab of grease on both balls. Now it's time to mount the shock. Now, see, we've got a problem here because the shock is longer than our mounts. So we've got to compress it. So I'm going to show you the trick for that. Put the camera up here, so hopefully we can draw this in shot. Okay. I think that'll work. Let's see if I'm having this right here. Keep it at an angle. You should be able to see it. Okay. And you can see the top mount. A little higher. Okay, I think we got everything in, in camera view now. All right, so let me show you my magic trick here. So what have I come up with? I've looked on YouTube trying to find different ways to compress a shock. I've seen people try to use like come along straps, take hose clamps and wire, compress it and squeeze it and clamp it. But I come up with what I think is an easier way, and that's just using zip ties. So this is a 36 inch quarter inch wide zip tie. You, you, you find this on HVAC duct work where they had that flex, uh, flex duct work. You attach it to trunk lines and stuff. That's what this is. You get it at Lowe's, uh, Harbor Freight, well, any place, pretty handy. So, and I keep this in the RV with me. I keep a couple pieces because you never, it just comes in handy for different emergency situations sometimes. So my goal is, is to compress this and slip this over here so we can get that connected. And I'll show you how I do this. Because we need something thin, so because we don't have much room once you mount this on here, to because you go, well, you got to be able to get it on and then get it, get this thing back off. All right, so here we go. See if we can get this in one take. 
So we want to, because I've got the clip in there, so we just want to snap it on the, on the lower ball. All right. You see, we can't, there's no way we can attach it to the top ball. So let's try to get this on there. Look, come here. It's going to be a little bit tricky because it's kind of tight right in, right in here. But we're going to do the best. And you want to make sure you get this kind of right centered because this is plastic on plastic. So it can be pretty slick. If, it's, if you're off center, it'll want to slide off on you. Remember, this is a 60 pound shock, so it takes a little bit of pressure, and I've only got about 142 pounds behind me. So, you know, I've got a small gap here to get by, so let's see how this is going to, how this is going to play out on the first try. I don't know. Let's push. It worked. All right. It also didn't help that it's 25 degrees out here, so it, that shock's pretty cold. That did work. All right, so now we just lift it up, lower the door slightly, line it up with the ball, make sure it's lined up, snap it on. All right, so now it's attached. Now we've got to get this loose, make sure we're still in camera shot. Okay, we are. So we just lower it down a little bit, we get slack, and it peels right off. Ta da! And now look what the what the door does, just like the other one. All right, let's get this back here. So now when we close it, it's got no binding. The shock's not rubbing anything. That's that's all a good sign. Let's open it again here. Now that's much better. I like it. I like it. So now you can do yours the same way. Hope you enjoyed that little fix it video. It took a little thinking and, and strategizing, but it's all worked out pretty well for me. And I think it'll work out well for you. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great night. Thanks. Bye bye. I mentioned, I think earlier, I was going to, I had some 55 pound shocks on order. Got them in. So I'm going to show you the difference between a 55, two 55 pound shocks are on this door to 60 pound shocks are on this door and there's very little difference let me try to close it up here for you okay so i'm just going to close the door down and then release them both at the same time and you'll get the ideal there you go very little difference both open up pretty much the same so if you're in questioning about whether you're getting a 55 or a 60 it really doesn't matter um, the 55 pound might be a little bit less money and easier to compress. So I guess yeah, 55 would be fine. There you go.